Before we get into today's show, I am Tom Downey. Who you got winning in the Super Bowl tonight? Kind of a big game going on. Four for the 49ers, C for the Chiefs. Some uh, rivalries there for both teams for the Bengals. We'll break down the latest Bengals news and rumors on today's show, but I want to hear your thoughts first in the comments section right now. Let's get into some free agency rumors on today's show. First up, is Tyler Boyd really going to be gone? ESPN explored the future of Boyd, who is set to be a free agent this offseason with the likely expectation Boyd does not return to Cincinnati. He has been a key part of this organization for several years now. He has been a mostly reliable and steady slot receiver, putting up what? 700 to 800 ish yards for a good majority of his career, although not necessarily doing that every season. And it is worth mentioning his numbers have begin have begun to dip. Now, part of that is the emergence of guys like Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and the quarterback injuries they suffered this past season. But Boyd is clearly wide receiver three on this team. Jamar Chase is going to command what will probably be a record setting contract for at least a little bit based on when he signs it. T. Higgins is going to command 20-ish plus million dollars a year. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Do you want to pay Boyd as well? That becomes very tough for an organization when their last draft class was kind of built up as a, let's look for some Boyd replacements. They drafted Charlie Jones out of Purdue. He didn't play that much. He missed some time due to injury. Uh, they view him as a slot. He played a lot of outside for Purdue, still kind of working his way towards that area. But I like Jones long-term. Hell, Andre Yoshivas outplayed Jones later round pick. Now, Yoshi's a bigger-bodied outside receiver with some speed, but he could always, if you wanted to short-term, rotate those guys as your number three, right? You can put Jamar Chase in the slot, which is a good thing because it allows for some fun matchup situations and rotate Yoshivas and Jones. So you don't have to retain Tyler Boyd, but he is a good football player. So if you can get him on the right, at the right price, maybe the team could consider it. What do you think ends up happening here, folks? Will Tyler Boyd end up re-signing with the Bengals? Y for yes, N for no. Go ahead and sound off for me in the comments section right now. Make no mistake, Boyd was a pretty key part of this team and of this organization the past few seasons. He was critical, he was impactful, but the likely outcome is that Tyler Boyd leaves. It's tough to pay three different wide receivers. You might not be paying Jamar Chase yet this season, but you know you're going to. If you're going to keep Higgins, he's got to get paid short-term or long-term, and maybe Tyler Boyd's market ends up being not very good. Maybe he doesn't get a ton of interest and it's like, ah, you know, he's getting offered a couple million dollars on one-year deals at his age and the, and the decline we saw statistically. If so, I am down to do a cheap one-year deal. Although at some point I do want to see more of Jones and Yoshivas, so that kind of is asterisks there. But if it's super cheap and you're trying to win games right now, I'm fine running it back all the way with, with, with a healthy Burrow, Boyd, Chase, and Higgins. I have no concerns about doing that. My suspicion, and this is what I would tell Boyd if I were his agent, look, man, you're getting up there in age. This might be your last real chance to secure a, a notable, sizable contract. So if I were Boyd, I'd probably go to the highest bidder because I'm not going to be able to do that very much moving forward. This is his last chance, I think, to really pull that off if the market is strong. By the way, not a great free agency cro crop at wide receiver. It is draft-wise. So some pros and cons from that perspective for Boyd. Now, today's show is made possible by Price Picks. Go to pricepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. If you haven't gotten going with Price Picks yet, now is the time to do so because the Super Bowl is here. It is tonight, and it is your last chance to do some Super Bowl Price Picks. It's daily fantasy made easy, guys. Two to six player stat projections, more than, less than on those stat projections. Get them all right, come out on top. I've got several prize picks I've got for the Super Bowl this year. I, in general, love to do the flex play. I only got to get two out of three right, or three out of four, or whatever. It, it's a lower payout, to be clear, but it also increases your chances of coming out on top. Here is my slate. 
Christian McCaffrey, more than 18.5 carries. Travis Kelsey, more than 70.5 receiving yards. And Rasheed Rice, less than 6.5 catches. Again, prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for the first deposit match up to $100. The link and the promo code will be in the comment section and the description of today's show. Some outside free agency rumors to consider. Uh, a to Z Sports suggested signing Geno Stone, the Ravens safety, with the pitch of, this is your new version of Mike Hilton. You're adding a good, solid veteran player, pulling them away from an AFC North rival in the process. Now, Stone's play style, and the numbers kind of bear this out. You say, okay, a lot of PBUs, wow, seven INTs, big breakouts in this year, not many TFLs. You'd probably guess, okay, that's probably someone who plays deep safety. And you'd be right. And guess what the Bengals didn't have great results of this year? Deep safety play. You might be able to argue that Dax Hill and Jordan Battle are both a little bit better around the box. Uh, Hill's issues kind of came with just blew some assignments, which is wild because he shouldn't be doing that as, as a young player. But he made plays too. I'm not, I have, to be clear, I am not out on Daxton Hill. But I'm trying to win games right now. I, this, this is a you're in the middle of, of your window. If you think adding Geno Stone for whatever the cost ends up looking like really helps you do that, you should consider it. Now, I'm not saying bench hill or battle, but maybe you try some more three safety stuff because Dax Dino can cover tight ends for you. Shoney can do that. Maybe you try to maximize your players in your window by going that route. So name a free agent who you would like the Bengals to go out and sign. Sound off for me in the comments section right now. I suspect I'll see some Chris Jones comments. Can't say. Let me tell you how he played tonight in the Super Bowl. Uh, ESPN reported that the Chiefs likely aren't going to franchise tag Chris Jones, which wouldn't be a huge surprise to me. Uh, his tag number is $32 million. That ain't going to happen. Ain't no way the Chiefs are going to tag him at that figure. They'd be far more inclined to tag Legereus Sneed, which means unless the Chiefs and Jones can agree to a deal that they had t issues agreeing to last time, he's going to hit free agency. And at that point, it becomes a bidding war in an open market, and maybe he ends up leaving the Chiefs. And wouldn't it be nice to steal away another key part of the Chiefs' uh, lines, offense and defense, and back-to-back offenses? It's a little bonus, right? The Bengals are in need of defensive tackle help. DJ Reader's a free agent. I like B.J. Hill. He ain't Chris Jones. And that's only one, honestly, of the guys under contract, I really only trust B.J. Hill. I don't trust Zachary Carter. I don't trust Jay Tufele. I don't trust Maxwell. I don't trust Bell. I don't trust that, that grouping. You can get Chris Jones. It's a massive, massive boost. So would you go out and sign Chris Jones? S for sign, P for pass. I'll spend some more time here on Jones momentarily, but vote for me in the comments section right now. Jones's numbers consistently remain among the NFL's best. Now, we did, I believe, start to see some slowing down of Chris Jones. You're probably going to have to be aware of, of his pitch count. He's, he's going to be 30 in July. He might not be the same, you know, 80% snap. Guy, which you know, I don't even want him to be that, that guy, frankly. But what I do know is this. He's going to get me a bunch of TFLs. He's going to get me a bunch of sacks. He's going to make big plays for me. He's done it every single season. He can stop the run pretty well. And he can get to the passer as a pass rusher on top of that. Now, the, issue, the big issue is not like the talent level or desire to add a DT. It's the money, right? Go figure that, that. That always turns out. The difference is between, you know, Chris Jones kind of got an adjusted deal, but not really. The market has changed drastically. Aaron Donald's making $31.67 million. I'm, I wouldn't be judging if Jones is trying to get more than Quinn Williams by a pretty good amount of money. Can I afford to pay him $26, $27 million? Is anyone going to do that, though? Maybe you get lucky, and maybe you have a scenario where there isn't a massive bidding war for Chris Jones, and he comes in at like, you know, 22, 23, and with all your cap space, maybe you find a way to make that viable for you. I I'd be a little bit surprised, but between Jones, Wilkins, and Justin Matabike, if they all have free agency, which I think some tags will happen too, that's a lot of guys. Not all are going to break the bank, I don't think. Winning a bidding war is tough for this team, but I'm going to monitor Chris Jones's market. If it's not as robust as I think it will be, maybe you could end up with Orlando Brown 2.0 this offseason. 